In today's Mass, which is the Mass of Our Lady on the Saturday, the fifth version of it, we read at the end of the Gospel, short as it is, Blessed are they who hear the Word of God and keep it. And today we think, as we do our meditation on the mysteries of the rosary that we're supposed to do for first Saturdays, we should meditate on those words of the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or yet again, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. In the life of St. Placidus, he was, when he was only seven years old, given over by his father to St. Benedict to be raised and trained properly. When he came of age, St. Placidus wanted to join the Benedictine order. Well, his father, the father of St. Placidus, was very pleased with this thought and then gave to St. Benedict large amounts of property where, upon which he could build some monastic houses. Well, people who lived around the estates, they didn't like the idea. So what they did is they, they quickly overtook that land so that St. Benedict could not build his monasteries. Rather than getting angry, as most of us would, and who would Rather than getting angry, he said, this is the will of God, and you will find your apostolate will work out much better in this other place. And he sent him on to, to Italy, and there he worked and labored. But that does bring a, a good point. You see in the lives of the saints, all the time, if you really look, how often they are offended. And yet it seems they just pass it on by. It doesn't mean, however, that they didn't experience all of those, those bitter feelings and emotions of anger and even revenge at times. Yet they never consented. They fought against it as they would someone trying to break into their home. They would not allow it entrance. And so it was with our Lord. All through his passion, think of this, God became a man in order to, to reconcile his enemies with his father. He knew that when he was to shed his blood, people would continue to sin, offend him, betray him. Nonetheless, he chose to do it, to become a man, to die on the cross, and to reconcile us to his father. And it happened time and time again how he was betrayed. Judas, one of the first ones to betray him, sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Yet when Judas came to the Garden of Gethsemane that night, as our Lord was going through his agony, how did our Lord greet him? He went up and he he received the kiss on, of, of peace on the cheek, and he called Judas his friend. Perhaps the last actual grace that Judas received from our Lord, and he rejected it. And then the priests, who were the very ones who were supposed to accept the Messiah, to preach unto others, they're the ones that clamored for our Lord's death on the cross. And they said, may his blood be upon us and upon our children. So far did their hatred go. And yet our Lord never said a word, but went to his death, even with them in mind. So great was his love for them. And then he watched all of the Roman soldiers casting stones at him along the way of Calvary, whipping him when he fell, hurrying him to get up. And then when they thought he was to die, only then did they give him a little bit of help. But it wasn't out of mercy. It was because they did not want to see him die except on the cross which was the most ignominious, humiliating death that one could ever receive. And then there on the cross, as he hung there, people jeering at him and mocking him, come down, come down from the cross, they would cry. Not a word. 
perhaps a look of love to them as blood poured from his veins, tears from his eyes. All of it was done so that these very men could be forgiven. He lived those words that he taught his apostles. Forgive those who trespass against you. Now, when we meditate on this fifth sorrowful mystery of the rosary, we meditate on those words and beg for the fruit of the mystery, which is none other than the forgiveness of injuries, we should remember ourselves. Sometimes we might think ourselves that we have, we have forgiven, but then later on when somebody brings that, that delicate situation up again, then all the passions inside of us arise once more, don't they? It's a sign that you have not forgiven and have not forgiven completely anyway. You certainly have not forgotten. And by forgotten, I don't mean simply erase it from your memory, but never to dwell on it, never allow it entrance. Be angry and sin not. That's what St. Paul said. But then our Lord said, let not the sun go down upon your anger. What does he mean by those words? Does it mean that we're allowed to harbor anger throughout the day, but then Sun, sundown comes and you have to make up? Well, no. It means never allow the anger to take root. Because if you do allow this, and I'm speaking about unjust anger, if you allow it root, then you give entrance to the devil. And then he causes all sorts of mischief. And if you're the type that, that dwells and stews over things, you'll notice that what happens is that you begin thinking about the anger, the offense done, and then it just it snowballs, and you, you then become bitter. And then perhaps it's thoughts of dislike for the person, and then it gets a little worse, maybe thoughts of vengeance. And finally, it ends up in utter hatred for that person and contempt, so that the next time you see them, not only will you not say anything, but perhaps you would do even worse and curse them, even if it's in your mind. So you see, this forgiveness of injuries, it's such an important part of our lives. And we should, as we pray the fifth sorrowful mystery, often ask ourselves, have we truly forgiven all of our enemies or those maybe who aren't our enemies, but we don't really get along with too well, have we forgiven them? Do we go out of our way sometimes to do some act of charity for them in order to overcome ourselves, our own passions, our own emotions? That's what forgiveness is all about. And that is what we should pray for in the rosary, particularly as we pray the mystery of the crucifixion. Continue with these thoughts as you do, you finish your 15 minute meditation today. The sermon counts as, as some of those minutes, but continue these thoughts as part of your meditation and, and, and ask yourself, ask Our Lady rather, for the grace always, always to forgive. Because in that way, you can ensure your own forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.